I'm Lauren Bregitzer, an Ableton certified trainer. And right now we're going to dive into using clips and scenes in Ableton Live 11. Now, clips and scenes are one of the things that sets Ableton apart from a lot of digital audio workstations. And so let's just start out. So to begin with, I'm here in session view. If you're in arrangement view, press the tab button on your keyboard to jump back into session view. So clips in Ableton Live in this session view sort of resemble a spreadsheet where you kind of have different cells. And I kind of look at the clip slots in sort of a, a similar way. These are all what we call clip slots. And I can drop in MIDI clips, which are basically instructions to tell an instrument or a drum kit to play certain notes or actual audio tracks. And so uh, to begin with, I'm just going to see that I have two MIDI tracks, two audio tracks. I'm gonna go into the packs. So down here in the browser, if I click on packs, and I'm going to select the chop and swing pack because that comes with all versions of Ableton Live. And I can see there's a demo song in there. Uh, there's different drum kits. So even though these play a drum beat when I select them and I have the preview enabled, these are really just the drum kits. So they're not the patterns that you hear themselves. Um, there's a fax racks, which we're not going to worry about right now. And so now let's clip, click on the MIDI clips here. And so these are different, uh, drum beats. So these are actual, the drum beats, as well as the drum kit that's associated with those beats. So when I drag these clips in there, it will load up the drum kit that's associated, associated with that drum clip and, uh, as well as the beats. So I can go through here and I can audition these and click on them in here. Okay, that's, that's that's what I'm gonna use for this for the time being. So I'm gonna drag it onto a MIDI clip. Now, one thing that you note is that MIDI clips go onto MIDI tracks, audio clips go into audio tracks. Now, if you do not have anything on an audio track and you drag a MIDI clip on it, Ableton Live will automatically convert it to a MIDI track and vice versa. You can also, when in doubt, just drag it into this blank area over here to the right and it will automatically create the appropriate track for that clip and load it up. So I can just delete that. So now I have this clip. So if I go in here and I can press this triangular button, that's the play button. So I'll play that clip. That's a little bit uh, loud. So I'm gonna dial down the volume a little bit and hit play. Now, if I wanna adjust the tempo, you can see that the clip is 108 beats per minute. And I can actually, and it, it has set the Ableton Live set to 108 beats per minute. So this is the first clip that I dragged in there. It's going to match the tempo of my Ableton Live set to that of the cl first clip that I dragged in there. If I want to play with it, I can do that. And the warp engine of Ableton Live will compress or expand uh, both audio and MIDI clips to match what the tempo of the session is. So that's how you can have different clips of different tempos all playing and locked together. So um, I can dial this back a little bit. Or speed it up. I sort of like that 96 beats per minute. So I'm just gonna type in 96 here, hit return and hit play. So that's playing a drum clip. So Going further into that pack, um, may want something that's tonal. So I want to add some some audio to it. So um, let's open up the melodic setting here and see what we have inside there. I have a couple that I have chosen that I liked. Um, maybe let's go to the accompaniment first. So I have a couple of uh, clips picked out. Um, I think I'm going to use this one. So that was kind of a, a little bit of a lo-fi synth sound to it. Um, and I can see that it says A minor, 75 beats per minute. So like I mentioned before, the speed of it, the tempo of it is not going to matter because Ableton Live is going to automatically, you know, play back that clip at the same tempo as my set. So if I hit play or the space bar, I'm only hearing the drum track. So if I want to hear that uh, 
that phasey, that biphase piano sound, I can just click on that play button. And since the play button's already playing on the drum kit, it's gonna play them both at the same time. Bring the volume down. So those are two MIDI clips. If I actually double click on either of those, it'll bring up this, this detail viewer down here and I can actually see the MIDI notes. I can go in and edit those, but I'm not gonna do that for the time being. So I got the chords here. I have the drum kit here. This is an A minor. So let's see if I can find some other stuff to sort of match this. Um, maybe I wanna go into samples. So samples will be actual audio samples, little odd digital audio recordings. So I can go here and open it up and I see uh, loops and chords. I have chords, drum loops. I already have a drum loop. Um, let's see, but drum loops will break it down into full loops, percussive loops, top loops. Top loops are usually like high percussion to sit on top of the mix. I got a couple in here I can check out. Now, one thing that you can do if you want to just test these out is while I'm playing my track, if I select any of these clips on the left-hand side of the browser, it will automatically start playing at the beginning of each bar and in tempo with the song. So I can hear how it matches while I'm playing the track. So if I just hit play here <coughs> and select a track, I can hear that clip playing. That's nice. I can check any other ones out. I like those. So I'm going to drag those to an audio track. So if I want to stop a clip from playing, like I'm hearing the drums and that synth sound, I can click any of these blank clip slots and just hit that square button. And it's going to stop that clip from playing. Now, if I hit play again, it's going to start playing on the nearest bar. Now, that's something you can adjust. We'll get into that later. Um, now, another thing you can do if you want to stop all the clips from playing is this square button here will also stop that clip. And also in the master section, this square button in the master section, that will stop all clips. That's the all clip stop button, stop all clips button. So now if I want to launch all these clips together in anything that's in this horizontal row, I can just go to the master section and you see the play button in the master section at number one. If I hit play here, that's gonna what we call a scene. So this is a scene. So if I click this button, it's gonna launch all three of those clips at once. So I hit play, bring the down, volume down. I want to add that shaker too. I kind of like that. Watch that scene. That's nice. So now I'm going to go a little bit more advanced here. Um, I'm going to dive in and I'm going to grab a bass loop. So we have... Um, Samples, let's go to music loops, grab a bass loop, and this is an A minor. So I, I've selected this one to play with it. So I'm just gonna drag it over here to the right and it's gonna create um, a new audio track for that to play in. So now let me launch that and hear how it sounds. So I really only liked those first four bars of that. So if I double click on that and bring that uh, audio clip down here to the bottom, this blue bar, which matches the color of that track, I can, is, is the loop selection. I can go in and say, okay, loop just that first four bars. So I can just grab that loop brace, 
drop it down, and now it's only gonna loop those first four bars, bars one through five. So now when I play it, So you can choose any selection of an audio clip or MIDI clip and loop just that. So you can fine tune these clips. You don't have to use the whole thing. Um, let's just add one more element here. Um, let's go in here and uh, let's see. Loops, music loops. Um, synth loops I got this in there so this is another little advanced thing here or slightly more than beginner um, this one's a B flat whistle thing I kind of like that but my song is in the key of A minor and this is a B flat minor uh, melodic part so if I play it they're going to sound pretty horrible together so what I can do is make sure to double click that so it's down here in the detail view on the bottom. And I can go over here to this pitch and the distance between B flat and A is just one half step. So I can actually take this and dial it down one half step. So now when I play it, it'll be in key. sounds nice so let's see if there's anything else i want to add well, we'll just go with those for now so if i want to arrange this out a little bit um now the thing about each track is make sure is each track can only play one clip at a time so i have multiple clips in there it'll only play one so i can arrange this out so maybe i want to start with just the drums so if i want to drag this drums to a new scene um i can just option drag on a mac and drag it to a new track and so maybe I want to start with just uh, the bass and drums. So I can just drop those in there. And now I can launch this third scene here. And maybe I want to add the hi-hats to it. So I can either you know, drag these down and copy them again by holding the option key, or I can right-click this scene, the scene number three, and go to duplicate, I can duplicate that, and then just drag those hi-hats down. And now I can launch that scene there. I'm gonna wanna duplicate that one again. And then I can add this biphase synth part. Launch this fifth scene. Let me put that shaker in both those scene four and five. So now I'm going to duplicate that. And then just option drag this whistle down there. So now this six scene will have all the tracks playing at once. So. So starting from the top, it starts with just this drum and bass by launching this scene. And I can label these scenes. So if I go in here, I can just right click, select rename, and I'll just call it A section. And I'm gonna do the same for the second, call it the B section, rename B, C and D. So I'm gonna launch the A section here. Launch the B section. And the C section. And the D section.
So that's the basics of um, using clips and scenes and dragging them to different tracks. Um, further, in a different video, I'm going to go into how to record those in the arrangement view and do further arranging from there. So thanks for tuning in and stay tuned for more videos.